Hi guys, here I am today again with another great dessert. Today I'm going to do a, a cake for my uh, cousin's graduation. She graduated June today, so congratulations to her. Right, let's get on. This is going to be a bog standard recipe like I do every time with the cake. Well, I call it a bog standard recipe. It's an all-in recipe. There's no cream method. The cream method's everything in together. Just ensure, guys, that your stuff's at room temperature. Don't bring your butter straight out of the fridge as, it's gonna, as it won't blend in as easy as it should. So we're going to go 400, 400, 400. So we're going to have 400 grams. Well, let's go for 300 and... 75 grams of flour because we're going to use the um, dark cocoa powder. The center that straight in, guys. So that's 400 grams exactly now. And then we're going to go 400 grams of sugar. Straight into our bowl. Each box of these butter to the fifth there. So we're gonna need one full one in there. So we've got 400, 400, 400. And the reason why I like that, that measurement there is because it gives me a nice soft textured cake, a nice, gives it a nice crumb with a nice firm dense texture where it helps you build the cake. So each one of these eggs that weigh 50 grams. So if we split that up, we're gonna need eight eggs. So for every 100 grams of ingredients you use, you use two eggs. We use four, so we're gonna use eight eggs. Straight in, just like before. And if any of you guys seen the roll or cupcakes, we're gonna be doing this again, but we're gonna do it in a cake version. So there we are guys, eight eggs. Put that onto a cream mix. Start the small. Give it a quick break to get the ingredients together. You don't want to do it now.
pants that, that makes him more alive to stare with. I fix it on it a little bit. I think he's very therapeutic, if I'm honest. Maybe it's just me, though. should climb up the side of it anyway so just take the fire line take the bottom of the pan turn it over on it like that so fold the paper around the bottom flip it onto the side so it's nice and neat like that stick it into the cake then. As you can see guys, a little bit of tape on the bottom, you don't need to worry about the paper. Grease up the side. I'm using a non stick tin anyway, so, so what we're gonna do, remember we've got a 400 grams in here. It's up to you if you wanna weigh it out equally, but I'm just gonna do it in my eye. Get it straight into the middle. the first first half of the cake as you can see I've only put half in there I'm only going to put half of the cake mixture in because instead of cutting it there we go bring your finger around it so it's got a nice edge to come up together the main thing is making sure that the edges are equal don't worry too much about the middle because the middle we're going to cut the lid off anyway I say give it a quick half so you don't want any massive air bubbles in it right guys we're going to put that this is the first stage of cake it's going in the oven between 160 to 180 depending on your oven <coughs> if it's a fan assisted oven put it in at 160 in the middle shelf because fan assisted ovens are more hotter than just no your bog standard ovens i'm going to put this on the middle shelf at about 170 180 because that's what my oven likes everybody else's ovens you just have to find your, your right cooking temperature Right guys, I'll be back in 25 minutes. Hi guys, so I'm, what I'm gonna do while the cakes are in the oven, I'm just gonna um, do some of the prep work for the decoration. Like I said, it's my cousin's graduation, so I'm gonna make it as nice as I can for her. What I've done is picked up this makeup set, a chocolate makeup set. I like to shop at places like um, these chocolate sweet shops, so you find little gems like this. I bought this for a pound, which you can't go wrong with because you couldn't even mold it for that price. And like I said, it's a lipstick, a nail varnish, and a little mitt, I think that's what you call it, compactor. I'm not too sure, but. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spray these gold and fill them full of the glitter. Because my, my cousin, she, she likes a bit of glamour, so I'm gonna make it as glamour as I can for her. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give that one coat. Try not to go too much at a time. Let that dry. Just all this is is, is is gold glitter straight over the top of it. So that's 
sit for two minutes just to let the flavor soak up the gold. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna build up layers of this so it's got a really nice shiny finish. Every time I use this, the kitchen's full of glitter for everything we cook after. But we don't like a bit of gold glitter. Like I said, and everything's edible guys, so make sure you use edible goods, don't be using any of these craft ones or anything like that. And as you can see guys, how nice of them, sorry, they nearly slipped off of the board. And they'll be using them as one for the decorations for the cakes. Well, one of them. Make sure I get the, get the top. Just getting the edges, guys. Like I said, nice and gold. Get them all shiny. There we go. So the cake's been in for about 10 minutes. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give it another about between eight to nine minutes and then I've got some Rollo's what I've had in the freezer. What I learned from the last time I did these Rollo cakes, it's better to stick them in the freezer prior to using them. They seem to cook better and hold the shape more within the cake. So I'm gonna wait till the cake's risen, about two thirds. So basically it's going in the oven between 25 to 30 minutes. So you wanna be taking it out after about 18, dropping, dropping your Rollo's in and putting it straight in. The tip, I'll bring it out of the oven, but normally I do it over at the oven. If you're gonna do this at home, guys, do it near as close as you can to the oven and try not to knock the cake, because what happens is once you're knocking the cake, you're knocking air out of it, and you might not get as much rise out of it as you wanted. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna have a look, I'm gonna have a check now, see where we are with the cake. I'll be back in one second, guys. Right, as you can see, guys, I've took my cake out. It's not fully done yet, but what I'm doing is I'm dropping frozen Rollos into my cake. Like I said, please guys, do this out in near the oven because I don't really like taking cakes out this, this done, but I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing, so try and fill up everywhere, and what'll happen is as this bakes, the reason I'm gonna freeze them is so the caramel done. Dutch, hopefully stays inside the chocolate. As you can see guys, just the dust all over. I can't lift it up too much because the tin's a bit hot and also I don't want to mess up the, the thing of the cake so I'm hoping that's a, that's a view and like I said I, that's all I can show you guys at the minute they've got in there to think of like a roll or cookie I'll try and put it in I'll show and show you as I pass put into the oven but that's the best I can get for you guys I'll bring it back as that right this has got to go back into the oven as my cake's not going to be a success right we've had Approximately 36 minutes guys, like I said, every oven's different. The approximate time was 25 minutes to half an hour, but you know, every recipe it, it can cook different at each time. So we're gonna put this on an upturn bowl and we're just gonna slowly release it from this thing. The loose bottom tin cake tins at best for it. If you haven't got one though, you can still work with other ones, it's just a bit more. So then what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift it onto it. And the four blue comes back from underneath. Just wipe your mind well up and put your coat back underneath. And just lift and pour. There we go guys, that's the first half, as you can see, 
fit nicely. It's got a lovely raise to it. That's all the more teasers are in there. It's got a lovely dough. And what we're looking for, especially with uh, chocolate cakes, is more like a brownie consistency. Because if you overcook, if you overcook your chocolate cake, you're gonna have nothing but powdery cocoa in your mouth. So like I said, with the grease proof again, you see how easy I got that off because I use that the, the, the way I grease it. Like I said, I could have put it all me and pulled it out. Yeah, it works great. But for me, I like this process better because now I can lift the cake and move it around. Always ensure that it's cooked under the eye, so you've got more overlapping. Put it right into the middle. Hold it together. Slot it in. We're going to go for round two, guys. You don't need to grease it this time due to the fact that it was done last time. I'm sorry about the mixer being in the way last time, just a, a minute ago in the first process. As you're filming, you, you concentrate on your cooking as any great chef know, so I'm gonna give you a better view this time. Spin the tin like that, give it a good knock. Then what we're going to do, we're going to run his finger around the inside of the cake. Let's give it a rim as it's rising. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. Don't worry about it being too neat because it's going to be cut and covered in cream. This is the bottom piece, so we're looking, we're looking to make sure that that, that top piece is the, is the, is the main bit. Alright guys, put this in the oven at 180. As you can see, it's going straight in. As you can see guys, it's like a, it's like a, um, like I was saying before, like a cookie. All the rollos are baked in nice, and we're trying to what we're trying to hold that shape of the rollo because when that sets, it's going to be amazing. Like I said, guys, this cake is going to be lovely. Also, as before, guys, cooked it, cooked it for 20 minutes, and I'm just pushing the rollos in. I'm going to sink them a bit deeper this time because I want to use this one as my base. Right, back in the oven for 10 minutes guys. And this will be nice and nice and ready to go. The other one's cooling nicely as you can see. Like I said, push the rollos deep in it. But make sure next time you do it near the oven because like I said, you don't want your cake too long out of the oven. Well guys, it's had an half an hour. I'm going to take it like, like the first one, I'm going to take it out of, out of its case and allow it to cool. So we'll flip the ball on its head, bring it over. We'll have a tea towel for this job. So. Consistent fit. What we're looking for is like a brownie, 
So think as your chocolate cakes as a brownie. In the middle it'll still be it'll still be a little bit under because as it's the residual heat will do it, that'll cook it. And like I said, I want a soft, nice brownie texture to it. This is like a roll or brownie cake. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get on with the um, cream while we're waiting. So I'll just get everything prepared, guys, and I'll show you the process of making uh, more teaser cream. Be back in five. Right, guys, onto the more teaser cream. So we're gonna. This is just a standard double cream. This is um, it is 284 mils of cream. To 280 grams. Of cream cheese, full fat of course. It's the only way it will get better if you use if you use a lighter one. It don't have a very good consistency. And what we're gonna do with this? We're gonna break down the cheese into the cream. cheesecake mix. So we're gonna bring that to so we're just beating it together. Beating it together so it starts creaming. Then we're gonna use a Malteser drinking chocolate sachet. If you can't find these anywhere, just use Ovaltine. Ovaltine is just as good. It's just that I thought with it being Maltesers, I'd use a Malteser sachet. So we'll add a full sachet into there. Dash of milk, just to get it creamy. We're looking for more. Straight. Straight with some icing sugar. About three three tablespoons of icing sugar should do. It nice and sweet, and then fold that together, start bringing it together nicely. Once it's together, start whisking. Feel the cream ch changes so I don't overbeat it. Great tip for this. There's different parts of your arm. That one does your bicep. So if you feel it getting tired, let's change. That does your shoulder. Let's 
give them a punch in the back. So we're looking for more broken bits and more teeth as well as a couple of hard ones. But let's give it a nice brush out. Some of the cream, which we're going to use up for later. So reserve some of that for the outer side. You don't really want more teas in that because it won't help things stick to it. Like I said, straight in, give it a nice fold through. Please try this recipe. Honestly, it's amazing. The malt comes through in it. It's just sweet enough. It's beautiful. These are still cooling, but I wanted to do the cream because I feel like if you leave things till everything's cool or this and that, you're gonna be at it for hours. So my advice is as many jobs as you can get done, get done. Right guys, I'd say about another 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes max they should be cool and then I'll come back to you and I'm going to show you my decorating skills. Thank you very much guys, see you in about 10-15. Right guys, here comes a fun bit, or what I think is a fun bit anyway. We're going to decorate this now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shove a coat through the middle of the cake. Remember like I said to you, this is a brownies type cake, so we're going to pull that straight over, over the cake. And then what we're going to do, cream, some more teaser cream, we're going to come around the sides, don't worry about it too much not being too neat, so we're going to it leaving itself out, like I said if there's any big bits trying pushing that into the cake, give yourself a nice even finish, try not to get one in the middle, so we've got a nice big hole in the middle, just use a cup to get that, See, pulled it away. We've got a nice gooey soft middle. And then, because my cousin, I asked her what her favourite Remember, she's been a student for many years now. So she told me roll more Maltesers, and jelly beer, and jelly beans. So I thought to myself, I could have made a colourful cake and what could I have really done with them? Give her a nice surprise. And I'm going to fill them with a cake with jelly beans. So when the cake gets cut, it's got jelly beans in the centre. So now for the top, give that a nice squash down. Side here is 
try and pop back it in. So the small one, what the small one is for, because there's more teasers in, in the in the in the more teasers cream. This has still got the same flavour, but it's not got the crushed more teasers in because the crushed more teasers are a bit lumpy. So I'll show you what's gonna happen next. We're gonna stick some around the side. So I wanted it as smooth as I possibly could get it. Basically this bit of cream is to give the cake a nice bit of sticking power. Just run a towel all the way around, clean up the board. Don't worry too much, you can clean it up when it comes out of the fridge in a bit. So there's that. So what, what we're going to do next guys, is we're going to put use chocolate fingers. I've got a dark, a dark one and a white one to go around the sides of it, just to give it a, a lovely effect as you'll see when it's done. As you can see they fit nice. So I'm going to go Again, I found these in a in a cut for a cut price sweet shop. But it's up to you where you get them from. I like to get a bargain when I'm decorating cakes. So I know this cake cost twenty five pounds to make. If I was to buy it when I'm finished, you'll see why why it would have cost so much to make. stick to it nice as you can see it's got a nice look to it keep going Same pattern. You can use chocolate curls for this as well, so if you have, if you know how to make chocolate curls, you can always do that, but I just find when I make it, cakes, anything I can do to make my life easier, I do, to be quite honest with you. I love making cakes, but I find it very stressful. When it's done, it's beautiful, and I think, wow, look what I've done, but I made a birthday cake for my son the other day and it stressed the life out of me basically if I'm totally honest.
Ito, bulok pa nga ako. As you can see, it's got a beautiful look to it. Again, plain, plain cream on the top. If any, what you can use, you can use a bit of any creators like you can see in my cake there. Over it with the more teaser cream. Fill it out nicely so it's good. It's filling it out lovely. Try not to get any the other cream. The big more teasers in there. And then what you can do is take the smooth surface on. Take me just for the sides. Take that on. Slowly, even it out on your cake, keep it as neat as possible because presentations are on right now. Right up to the side with it. Spence with these. These are some beautiful chocolates from a place called MS. Malt and Spence is what we have in England. It's absolutely beautiful. And I feel like they made the most beautiful chocolate. And what we're going to do with this is I'm going to place that one in the centre. And I'm going to place that one there. Doing, you see, nobody's perfect. Push them up to the sides. Remember, there's a bit of cream on the middle of Get them up to the sides.
Oh, there's one for the chef there. We'll take that for the chef there. Eh? this but I'm really not and for the life of me I don't know why they put a clip sorry well, guys I'm going to have to turn this around because I can't see it My chocolate jelly bean, chocolate finger, and chocolate cake. Like I said, it's for my cousin's graduation, so I hope she likes it. I'm Chef Phil, see you later.